Hello, everyone. This is Carrie Desberg. I'm Chief Marketing Officer with InPartner. For those of you who don't know us, we make partner relationship management software. Uh, we are fortunate to work with the world's largest companies everywhere around the world, both large and small. Uh, and we help uh, optimize the performance of your channel. Um, Donna, if you could go to the next slide, uh, that would be great. Um, <clears throat> One of the greatest things about that is it also puts us alongside the uh, world's top channel strategists, those people who are really making the headlines and speaking on those big stages and uh, uh, curating the conversation of the big channel events and really being those strategists that we find alongside our top customers everywhere around the world. So today is my pleasure to welcome you to our webinar, uh, which is about uh, uh, partner support and really redefining that. So often we think about uh, uh, customer support and, and what you expect for that and that, that great reactivity. Uh, but in today's market, customer success has really been the way that, that the leading companies are, are defining how they serve their partners and really get them what they need before they're even asking for that. And that same thing is true for uh, partners. So. Uh, my guest today, our guest today is uh, Donna Kiernan. He's, uh, I'm broadcasting uh, live from Seattle, Washington in my home office and uh, Donna is joining us. Uh, he's the president of Tenego, uh, a uh, leading uh, channel strategy firm in Ireland. Uh, and uh, Donna is uh, not only uh, founder and uh, CEO of Tenego Partnering and uh, Tenego Academy, but uh, also is a member. Uh, we're very proud to have him be a member of uh, our channel chief advisory board. Uh, so uh, with that, I'm going to uh, turn this over uh, to Donna to talk about uh, how uh, partner success can really change the game uh, for the way that your partners engage with your partner program. So welcome Donna and please take it away. Thank you, Kerry. It's, it's great to be involved, a great initiative, and again, congratulations. So, it's, and it's great to be talking to uh, everyone on the session today. The topic, as Kerry outlined, so it's outward partner support, in with partner success. So, I'm going to go through a points, a few points on this, and to draw into some, maybe some practical solutions, but again, every scenario is different, and how you apply this to your situation is going to be different than others. First thing, what is the greatest capability you're looking for in partners? What have partners got that you need most? It's likely credibility and brand within their contact base. It's the relationships that they have with your target decision makers. Now, with the travel restrictions upon us pretty much everywhere around the world, the partner relationships with their contact base are more important than ever. So the value that partner brings is more important than ever. A common challenge vendors have with partners is that too many of them are not proactive with their product. Yes, everything sounds good and feels good at the start of the relationship and there's a great enthusiasm to get started. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. There can be many possible reasons for this, and it's, it's typically around partner fit or misaligned partner proposition. The partner simply, they must have higher priorities. You may believe they're misplaced priorities sometimes, but that's typically the challenge. The first battle was getting into the partner business plans and featuring in the partner's priorities for their business. And then you had the opportunity to enable their frontline teams, the partners, customer success, account managers, business development teams. You enable them to be successful in that first engagement of their contact base, their customers, with your proposition, with your product. And then to be able to build from that. Now, we take a step back to look at sort of the vendors. We all implement processes and systems so we can scale. And that's the only way we can scale. We define 
what's the best way to sell the product? How do you get that initial market engagement? How do you build awareness in the marketplace? How do you generate leads? How do you educate if that's what you need to do? And how do you bring them through the process to sell your product? And then we capture that knowledge and we build that into a system to be able to enable partners. Effective training and enablement in that bite-sized, just-in-time training modules to enable the partner frontline teams. Because we can't overwhelm them. We have to give them what they need when they need it and make it easily accessible for when that needs it. So you have to show up at the right time. And trends are shown in the marketplace. That boot camp style of enablement and training doesn't work. You need to be able to easily accept the smaller bites. And partner portals and PRM systems, like in partner, they offer segmentation. So it's not that one size fits all. You can break it down and then personalization of the materials and the services with the regular relevant updates and success stories, customer success and also partner success stories to further drive on or motivate the partners. The systems approach invariably for scalability treats every partner the same. It treats every member of their team the same. And that's a challenge. And then partners need to be managed. Plans need to be managed. We have an agreed plan when we start for a partner. That needs to be managed. But then again, who wants to be managed? People don't like being managed. They like working together. Our partners are supposed to be working together. So when we have signed a partner manager, what message does that give to the partner? How do they feel? They feel that yes, we have a commitment to deliver on to our vendors and we're going to be managed to make sure we do that. So this agreed plan and commitment is a joint agreed plan and commitment. And we talked about so if the vendors not being proactive, are they not delivering delivering on their plan? Obviously, we feel they're not delivering on their expectations or our expectations of them. And is that plan mostly about what the partner is going to do? So a few things on the plan, and when we start with a partner, yes, we have done our evaluation. We understand our capabilities to a point, but there is a big, a big assumption that they have the right capabilities. There is a big assumption from them too also that they have the time available and the resources to do what they need to do. And maybe the plan was right on that particular day and everything else was right on that particular day, but things change and we have to change to, to, to make the best of the relationship. If we take that a step further, rather than manage partners, if we could support partners. So partners do need to be supported. And it's always helpful to get the partner to see you as a valuable and helpful resource. That they find it easy to contact your team, the vendor, someone who knows them, that they have a relationship with and someone who knows their needs and find your support to be on point and responsive for when they need it. A partner support again assumes that the partner knows what to ask for. It assumes the partner knows what the problems, what problems you can solve and that you can solve it quickly. And then they can contact you to help them. But in most cases, the partner doesn't know this. In most cases, the frontline team doesn't know this. And they need ongoing, ongoing enablement and education. And sometimes our support, partner support teams aren't structured for that. Our partner support, because of the scalability, scalability within the capabilities of our own support teams as well, it's hard for them to step across that offer information bit and then ask questions. To understand are we in an answer a query mode or are we in understanding and finding out what's needed mode then we take that forward into partner success enablement which understands the partner's business and cares about the partner's business it understands all the other products and all the other drivers within the partners frontline, account managers, customer success managers, 
sales development reps, business development managers, whatever it may be, it understands the partner's capabilities. And the prime capability is their relationships and brand in their contact base. And then how do we build on that? So it understands the partner's possibilities and the potential. And with ongoing listening, diagnosing, solving problems, aligning objectives, because sometimes the partner's frontline people, you may not fit into it, but then at least you know that. So trying to figure out where you fit is what the job is. So sharing materials and then the short-term training programs as needed, not just as a start, and helping your partner meet targets. I'm just going to check the questions and chat panel if, if anyone wants to pop in at any point. So we've heard about customer success and we've heard about customer experience management. How come we don't hear about partner experience management? How come we don't hear about partner coaching? We have sales coaching. Do we have partner sales coaching coming from the vendors? From the point of scalability and systems, best practice exists because every business is the same. Expertise exists because every business is different. And that is the balance that we're working with between systems, processes, standard materials, and then expertise to allow the partners to apply that to meet their goals and to help you meet yours with the partner. The easiest to use solutions are used more, referred more, and they sell more. You go back to Apple's ethos when it comes to the iPhone and Google with a number of their products. The way they make these products so much easier to use and therefore they go viral. The easy to use services get used more. Your Ubers, your Just Eat, your Netflix. Why did they disrupt markets? Because of that ease of use. Meeting the needs of how people want to consume and use these products. So how do we make it easier for partners? How well does your marketing and sales approach and your processing and materials, how well does that align to how the partner operates? Are we asking the partner to change their business to suit you? Or are we understanding how they want to work and then figure out together what's the best way of working and align and adjust your materials to that best way of working together? When their relationship and their credibility, their brand, is the greatest value to you, how do you help them just use that and to make it as easy as possible? In understanding the processes, their challenges, and what they believe will work, and then working out how you work together, and how do you make that as easy as possible? If it was a simple thing about in educating to start that conversation with their contact base, with their customers, how do you enable them to reshare content just with the click of a button that's tuned to their particular situation? Whether it's relevant content in a monthly newsletter, whether it's social media campaigns, or it's whether it's when to take your product out of the bag, so to speak, to be able to bring it up in a conversation with a partner or with their decision makers, their customers. And then even how do they present their product that where do you put in your particular deck or slides of your deck that start that conversation, that enables that conversation. Invariably, every part of business is different. They have weaknesses and they have strengths. You know why you started working with the first place. Do we expect them to be good at everything? Or can we work with their weaknesses and help them focus on their strengths and we fill the gaps with our weak? There is a reluctance in providing sort of this proactive partner success type support because we're going to spoil the partners. We don't want to be taken for granted. We don't want to be spoon feeding them because we'll feel abused. But there is an element here of uh, coaching. And in that partner coaching approach, we always want them to get better. And our objective of coaching is not just about kind of, okay, forgiving them for what stuff they're not good at today. It's about encouraging them 
to meet those goals of success and what do they need to do to get better for their success, for your success together. So sales and customer success is about solving customer problems to help the customer meet their goals. And being able to ask the questions in the topics that the customer doesn't know about sometimes. And partner success is getting in there to help the partner solve the problems that you believe they should be solving with your product, but also to fit in with all the other solutions and services that they may offer. So I wonder how many partner managers, how many vendors actually understand their partner's goals? Total, not just when it comes to your product. And then what are the goals of their frontline teams, their customer success managers? What's the balance of all the solutions that they have, all the targets that they have? And then with the new business development, bringing in new customers, how do they meet their targets? And then how do you fit in that? What commissions do they get? What targets do they have and all the other solutions? And then where do you fit in that noise, so to speak? And what coaching do you need to provide them to meet their goals with your product? So I'm happy to take any questions at this point. Gary, you included? Yeah, <laughs> all right. Well, we'll uh, see if any questions come through. I, I, uh, I'll uh, i wrap up here by uh, summarizing. Uh, you said uh, um, the easier to use solutions when, and true words were never said. Um, such simple, simple words. Uh, but, you know, especially now in this absolutely unscriptable, crazy situation that we're all navigating through, uh, those words are absolutely at the core of what Impartner does. Uh, we help and make it easier for your partners to do business with you. Uh, and for you, especially now as uh, resources are increasingly uh, limited for your teams, uh, we help you automate those operational basics uh, so that uh, uh, you can really focus on those truly strategic conversations that really drive the performance of your business. When we ask our customers globally in a study where the results are are blind back to us, we don't know who's saying what because uh, we, we don't want them to be nice to us. We just want to know the truth. How are we really helping drive value for us, for you? Um, uh, our customers say that we help them drive a 32.3% increase in revenue. Think about that. What is the, what more powerful lever could you pull in helping you uh, increase the value of your channel, which is uh, incredibly important now uh, when you need those channel partners to be going that last mile and you can't get there directly. Who knows uh, when we'll ever be able to get back on planes right now or I'm going to be able to leave my office in Seattle. Uh, uh, you know, and that's because it really automates the entire partner journey from recruiting to onboarding to deal registration to uh, providing collateral and all those things that Donna just talked about that your partners really want. Uh, to uh, be able to uh, work effectively with you and make it easy, easy for them to get. Uh, to hit on the administrative costs again, uh, our customers report a 29% uh, decrease uh, in the amount of time they spend on uh, administrative tasks because uh, you really are uh, automating uh, those oper operational basics to be able to have those human important conversations. Um, <clears throat> and the next one uh, is, uh, 78% say that a partner gives them a competitive advantage. So uh, uh, back to those words, Donna, the easier to use solutions when. Uh, when you make it easy for your customers to show up at your front door, uh, and it's not a, a, a threadbare dog hair cover front door mat, right? You've got a world-class digital uh, experience that welcomes your partners uh, in a way that says we're going to be easy to do business with we're going to make it easy for you to get what you need uh, to really accelerate your business and uh, not only survive but thrive and scale and prosper uh, as you move forward if you could move to the next slide Donna. Yep. Uh, and partner uh, provides a full suite of solutions that help you manage every step of your partner ecosystem uh, from your traditional partners in that gold, silver, platinum uh, world, uh, all the way to um, in today's 
uh, <clears throat> emerging shadow partners, referral partners, whether those are customer referrals or partner referrals. So um, as you're out there and looking uh, to uh, really drive your partner engagement and really be able to have that uh, proactive partner support that uh, gives you a strategic competitive advantage in the marketplace, uh, we would love uh, to work with you. I know Donna would love to work with you uh, in helping you uh, build out your uh, channel program strategies and your channel technology stack in a really uh, a way that helps you stand out from the competition. So uh, with that, uh, Donna, if you could go to the next slide uh, and uh, let's uh, open uh, the gates and see if there are any questions out there. Uh, Donna, I do see a few out there if you want to take us yeah. through those. Okay, so okay, the first one from Daniel. So thank you, Daniel. Um, do you believe that one partner program fits all or that you create specific programs based on their goals, objectives, business model, et cetera? So, yeah, I think you try to define different partner types and say within your partner program, you have partner types and then you can have partner tiers depending on how proactive the partner is going to be. And then based on the tiers, what support levels you're going to offer. I think within those support levels, you can have more hands-on to fit with our businesses. So it's not a separate program, but it's almost separate tiers within your program. And obviously you don't want to have too many because it has to be defined. But there's almost a level you can go beyond the structure and the systems, but the expertise of the people engaging with the partners need to be doing a bit more than just answering questions. And, and that's, what, that's the point we're making all of this. So the structure of the program is one thing, the structure of supports within the tiers and then the capabilities. I hope yeah, that answered. Would... Yes, mm -hmm. point Kerry. I, I would I would add to that that uh, you know certainly as technology continues to advance and in our own platform, uh, our segmentation uh, capabilities are one of the key reasons that uh, customers choose us because uh, well you may have a traditional structure in gold and silver platinum at the end of the day every partner is gold for something and when you really have the ability to give every partner <clears throat> the right care and feeding. Uh, to uh, help them focus on what it is that they really need to be successful, you can not only empower that 20% that delivers 80% of your revenue in that traditional max, but uh, really help uh, it, uh, empower that whole long tail by making sure that everybody gets what they need and not just uh, the, the folks and the partners that you have time uh, to service when uh, you uh, only have uh, traditional capabilities and really can't uh, segment and um, enable everybody in just the way that they need. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Daniel, I hope that covers us. Uh, come back if there's further. Uh, from Tom, when you're evaluating a new partner, what are some of the KPIs that you identify that make indicate that they're truly effective partner on, on your hands. So, so how do you communicate the difference between tr transactional relationship dynamics and a new partner? So we put a lot of emphasis on partner fit, which is really about understanding the partner's business and then understanding how your proposition fits within the business. And then in that, assessing what capabilities they have that meets your needs and then where the need for the support. Now, when you talk about KPIs, uh, there are many objective metrics in there. Basically, how many customers of your type are going to uh, do they typically engage with how many customers of your type do they have already and then they're ongoing and then you can put a KPI on the activities the, the, the number of engagements so to speak and you can put a KPI on a KPI on that but also on the yes can you measure uh, commitment interest and commitment it, it's very momentary it's how well you fit in their plans and you can see that ongoing activity in their plans because it's the, it's the leading indicator on the activity that comes with the results of revenue down the line. I think that would be probably the, I hope that's it, is what you're looking for, Tom. Uh, but again, come back if there's further. Uh, Raj, uh, are you seeing more partner relationships are reciprocal, requiring you to sell their products if they sell yours? And how do you deal with these in partners? So SMB space, so um, it's, I, I hear it asked a lot. Kind of, yeah, we'll sell your product if uh, you sell ours. Um, it's, it's not always, even at best, it's not a balanced relationship. 
and I think it, it's wrong to commit to it if you can't deliver it, otherwise it's just distracting and it's going to damage the relationship somewhere down the line. If you're a, a basically a one-to-many type relationship and say you can't treat them all equally or fairly or in giving them leads, uh, then it's, it's difficult to manage. So uh, I've seen it and we have to say, no, sorry, that's not the relationship we're looking for. We're looking for resellers and we're willing to help you get leads but uh, we're not so sure we're in a position to give you leads. If they come up occasionally, yes, but it's very non-committal. I think it's, but sometimes we see that it's more than that and it does actually fit, but in more cases, it's no, it's a straight up reseller relationship we're looking for. Kerry, do you want to make any point on any of those? No, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more. We, we, we hear that often as a, as a tech vendor and, uh, um, uh, uh, I think you're right. You know, it seems so tempting at the beginning, but at the end, it, it never really is the right focus. You, you want it to just make sense from yeah. the get-go. Yeah. So th there's next one there from Anna. I suppose this is one you can come in on as well, uh, Kerry, because if for a technology company, how do you recommend to get partners to be certified on all our products, other than requiring certification as tier requirements? Um, if your training helps them across their business, if your training helps them win more business, if it's of value in a more say, broader industry sense, I think then it's of value. If it helps the career development of the individuals doing the training, then it's of value as well. And other than that, kind of, uh, that's what's the objectives of certification. In some cases, I just mentioned here, it's very much a measure of commitment of the partner to move up to the next tier. And then you're willing to invest more to actually do that, which is just the reward. Uh, so, I'm not quite sure. Depends on the specific situation. I hope that gives you a generic answer at least. I mean, any barrier you put in place to start in the relationship, uh, it has to be worthwhile. It's as simple as that. It has to be kind of if either you want that as a commitment measure, or the partner absolutely needs it to be able to deliver value for you, or a basically you have enough value the far side of that training for them that they want to do it. A related question to that, if I could, say, Kerry, um, is can you charge a partner signing fee? And and kind of so if the training is of value and sufficient value, then you can charge a fee. But then it's a whole question of uh, you can have these fees on the table, and uh, and have them as an absolute requirement, but it may disappear in the negotiation with the partner because they're offering something else in return. Hope that answers Anna. Okay. Any other questions? Are we good? All right. Uh, well, with that, I think we will wrap it up today. Uh, thank you so much for joining this webinar today. Uh, it's great to see all of you out there. Uh, some of you are customers, some of you are prospects. Uh, as you move forward and either making a buying decision, uh, look forward to talking to you on how we can help uh, deliver value to you and engaging your partners and those of you who are customers I see some new ones on there uh, really really looking forward to uh, coming live uh, with you and uh, helping you amplify the success of uh, your indirect channel uh, stay safe everyone uh, we have a constant series of webinar with Donna and the other members of the uh, General Chief Advisory Council and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you soon thank you for joining everyone Kerry, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.